No matter what you think about Buster Murdoch, no matter whether you think he cheated in law school, whatever, no matter whether you think there's something with Stephen Smith, whatever, you cannot deny one thing. He's a victim. Stop, wait, he is a victim. His mother was shot to death. His brother was shot to death. His dad is sitting in front of him when he's on the stand and is likely gonna be in prison for the rest of his life. And he's the last remaining one in his family of four. So he is a victim in all of this. He is not charged with this. This is not his fault what happened, right? But that said, what was he saying to us when he wasn't saying anything? And what was he saying to us when he was saying stuff? Because there's so much that is left unsaid unless you have the right ears, right? Body language. For instance, I want you to just watch this one clip. This is, this is Buster on the stand talking about when he first found out about his mom and his brother being murdered. And I just want you to watch for the cues and the clues that you might not have seen the first time. Take a peek. My dad called me. I can't, I can't remember the exact time, but it was later. Um, and he called me on the phone. He asked me if I was sitting down, and I was like, "Yeah." And then he, you know, sounded odd. And then he, then he told me that that my mom and, and brother had been shot. What'd you do? Well, Brooklyn, my girlfriend, was with me, and I, I think she heard the. Um, she could hear my conversation kind of over the phone. And so she just started packing, packing stuff, and I, I kind of just sat there for a minute. And I was, I was in shock. Oh, there's so much going on there, right? Like, if he's guilty, does he just feel like dirt for taking his son's mom and brother away? Or if he's innocent, is he devastated for what his son is going through and he's lost his other son and his wife joining me now is a body language expert her name is Lillian Glass she's also an expert witness a jury and trial consultant and she's authored oh I don't know 16 books including the body language advantage and the body language of liars okay so um tell you what I Lillian I wasn't sure what to make of that because I expected that he would cry uh, he didn't cry, but his dad had full-on tears, not fake cry, tears crying. But what did you see in that split screen of Buster and Alec at that moment that Buster was just testifying? Well, I think Buster was really forthright. He was very uh, open, and he was numb. He was telling the truth. There was no signal of deception. But one thing, it's interesting that you notice tears. I didn't see tears. I saw that he was wiping his cheek, and then he wiped his eyes. It didn't ring true to me. Uh, he was, I think he was moved that his son was on the stand and you saw that his nose was a little red. So there was some flushing. So there was some type of body autonomic nervous system reaction. But uh, basically I didn't see the tears. There were, well, I have to say, honest to God, so often I have said that, well, hey, you're crying without tears, Alec Murdoch, but that moment, there was one that fell all the way down, and after it hit the corner of his mouth, he actually wiped it away. So he absolutely did have a tear at that moment. But at other times, you're right, he, he has not. There's this other clip I want you to look at. It's when Buster's describing the birthday party that was thrown for his dad the weekend before the murders, and there was this moment where I think everybody kind of seized on Buster... I think he's 26, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he didn't know his own dad's birth date. Have a look at this. Did your mom make a cake for your dad? Yes, sir. And that was um, a group of friends. When's your dad's birthday? Do you know the exact <clears throat> date? Uh, it's not a test. You just say you don't know if you don't know. No, I don't, I don't know the exact date. It's around uh, Memorial Day? That's right. Okay. 27th, maybe. The... Um, Okay, Lillian, I'm not sure if I'm looking at um, Alex sort of thinking like, oh man, I'm a bad father if I didn't instill those important values in my kids or what I'm supposed to be looking at with Buster not knowing his dad's birthday. Does that scream anything to you just in terms of like, okay, how close was this family? How loving was this family? Or do lots of 26-year-old boys not remember their moms and dad's birthdays? That's very unusual for an adult. For a child, it's one thing, but for an adult, it is something else. And you see that he's a little embarrassed and he can't remember. 
And so the lawyer is trying to help them along saying, oh, it's not a test. But then you see Buster, you know, he's a little upset by it or shocked by it, actually numb by it, numbed by it. But then he gives kind of a, a little smirk at the end. Oh, good. He remembered. So that speaks volumes that they weren't that close, it seems to me. Yeah, that was weird. I, I, it is a, a memo to myself to check in with my two sons to make sure they know when my birthday is. It's so close to Christmas that I don't think they'll ever forget. But it is something that I think I'd be devastated if my kids didn't know uh, my birthday. Lillian, thank you. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Lillian Glass, a body language expert, will definitely have you back. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.